This is Professor Rudy, and this video is on an introduction to Simulink. Simulink is a simulation software tool that is available within MATLAB. Um, and so what this is for is this is an alternative approach uh, to programming. And so the way this works is in order to open up Simulink, um, you open up your MATLAB, and in your command window, you type the word Simulink, S-I-M-U-L-I-N-K, hit enter. And this may take a few minutes, especially if this is the uh, first time you've opened this up. But uh, what this will do is this will pop up a window. So now you'll see this Simulink library browser. And this has a bunch of blocks. And so what this is, is this is a kind of a menu of options of things that you can include in your Simulink program. Now, in MATLAB, you're used to creating script files of code or function files of code. Uh, Simulink looks a little bit different. Rather than having script files, you create what is called a model. And so to create a new model, you can do this from the Simulink library browser. This button right here will create a new model. And so if we click on this, we'll see what we end up with is a new window here. And this window is basically just a blank slate. And this is kind of, you can think of this as a, as a board for um, building your model. And you build that using the blocks from the library. And so there's a lot of different options on the menu here in the library. Um, so sometimes you have to kind of dig around to find what you're looking for. But you can um, sometimes find yourself looking in the right place. Um, so if I'm going to start a model, typically you need a signal to be coming in from somewhere. So this might be input from a sensor if you're... Um, integrating this with a real system, or if we're really just doing uh, a simulation environment where everything's run in software, we're going to need some kind of signal source. So the sources block here is going to give us a whole list of options for things that we can use to create or generate signals. Um, so just to highlight a few examples, we could use uh, just create a constant. This will send a constant out. Um, or a pulse generator, we can create pulses at a certain rate or a sine wave at a certain rate. Um, we can generate step functions with different properties so that we can look at step responses of a system. Um, another interesting one I'd like to point out is this clock block, which basically this will give us uh, a time value in a sense, and it's the time within the simulation. So this will typically start at zero and then count up. And so uh, with this, we can um, look at what's happening. So let's just pick a signal source here. Maybe we'll go with a step. And let me, what we do is we click and hold and then drag and drop this into our model. Now we can put this anywhere on here. Um, typically, you want to kind of follow a, a good organization of your blocks. So sources are usually going to appear on the left, and then your flow is going to move uh, to the right. What we see on this block is there's this little um, arrow coming off here. That means that that signal is going to come off of that. Um, but now we need to figure out somewhere for that to go. So um, you can use math operations. So over here in the library, there's all sorts of different math operations that we can do. Um, we can add signals together. Um, or do division. Uh, we can multiply by a constant gain. Uh, there's a whole set of math functions that we can do. So let's, let's maybe choose this math function block. Now again, I can drop this anywhere that I want. Um, a lot of times it makes sense to have things line up though so that your model looks really nice. Um, and so now I have this block here and I want to send this step into that math function. So I can click here and drag it over. You see this is a red dashed line before I connect it to anything. But as soon as I hit something, it'll lock in as a black line, solid line. And now we can see this little jump here in the line, right? That is not a problem. It is not going to cause your program to run incorrectly. But what you might want to do just to make it look nice is click on this block, hold, 
and drag it down till it snaps into place so you have a nice straight line. Keeping your simulink programs organized is going to um, really help make them clear and organized, easy to understand, um, and particularly you'll see as you build these, um, they'll start to get more and more complex, and the more you keep things neat along the way, um, the easier it's going to be to understand your program. Because um, one thing that you you might notice is that um, in MATLAB script files, we have comments that we can use to explain what's going on. Um, Simulink kind of has that. We can um, just double click anywhere in here and add text, but it's not going to have the same um, natural effect as following comments through code because there's that kind of sequential ordering. But just to show you to how to add a comment in Simulink, we would double click right here, let's say, and then I could say input. Um, and really we could probably be more descriptive, but I haven't really explained what this situation is. Now you can also select somehow, yeah, click, hold, and you can drag and put this where you want it to go. Maybe we want it to line up right there. Um, but in general, um, you can add text wherever you want. The other thing that you can do is you can change the name of these blocks. Every block has a name, um, and they just have kind of default names, and so you could change this to be to read something else um, if you wanted to. So you would just double click, and then you can edit that text. Now before we go into detail about what each of these blocks are doing, I do want to um, kind of finish this so that we have a complete model. So we have an input, we're going through some function, but really then this signal still needs somewhere to go. We still have an arrow coming out here with a signal. And so if we look at, under the library browser, the syncs block, there are different ways to end a signal path. So one thing is that these models are not going to run properly unless every signal kind of reaches an end. So if you just wanted to cap it off and do nothing with it, you can use this terminator block just so that the signal comes to an end. But practically you want to do something with this. So maybe this is data that you wanted to store in a file so you can create mat files with this data. Or you could send them to the workspace so that you can um, use that information in MATLAB. So that's one thing with Simulink is that it does um, coordinate with MATLAB. You can send variables to MATLAB, you can get variables from MATLAB, so Simulink and MATLAB are not completely independent. But one thing that's probably most common, uh, at least in simple Simulink programs, is that we want to see what's going on. We want to look at a scope, and what this scope is, is it's basically just going to plot that signal. So if I drag this in, set that down, connect this to the output of my math function, now I can use that scope to see the output of that function. Now again, I like to keep things neat, so I'm going to drop that so it's nice and straight. Now, we've put these blocks in here, but blocks can each have different properties. So uh, let's go through these and see what's happening. If I take this block and double click, it'll open up this menu of parameters. And so for a step function, it has different parameters of interest. Um, the one first is the step time. So this is when that step is going to kick on. So right now that defaults to a value of one. So that's at one second, this step will kick on. Um, so that's fine, we can leave that. Then we've got these initial and final values. So for this step, step function, we can start at any value we want and end at any value we want. And that change will happen at this step time. So right now it'll start at zero and then at one second it'll kick up to one. But maybe I didn't want a unit step, maybe I wanted this to be two. And so that's all I would need to do to change that. Um, for now, don't worry about these sample time options, just leave these at the default. But if we wanted to change that final value to two, we can do that, we just say apply, and then we're done. Now this math function is an interesting one. If we double click on this, we can see that there are actually um, a whole list of different functions that we can complete within this same block. So this is how Simulink handles um, a variety of mathematical operations. They decided rather than create a whole bunch of different blocks that you would need to sort through, let's just use this one block and then have different options in it. Um, so we can do exponentials, logarithms, etc. Um, and so uh, maybe we want this to um, do square. So we'll take our input signal and square it. And so um, now you'll notice that what was in this block has changed, so it looks a little bit different, so that's interesting. 
Um, now for the scope, um, we don't really need to worry about getting into the properties of this. Pretty much it's just going to plot whatever signal's coming in here. So um, now let's try running this program. So this model, um, if we click on this play button, this run button here, it's going to run this simulation. It's going to use this input, send it into this function, and then send that to this scope. But you can see this did complete and nothing really happened other than there are some warnings down here in the MATLAB window. Simulink has a bad habit of having a lot of warnings. Um, this is one you really don't have to worry about. Um, but the code did run. Warnings do not stop your code from running. But it didn't do anything for us. What we need to do if we want to see what happened here is we want to double click on this scope and now we're going to open up and see what happened here. So we can look at this scope now and you can change the size of this, you can do all sorts of stuff. One of the most convenient things on the scope is this auto scale option and if you click on this it'll kind of fit to the window so that you can see what's going on. Sometimes you'll find that um, the scope does not default to a good um, scale on the y-axis so you can use that auto scale and get a good picture of what's going on so if we look at our problem here we had a step function that at one second kicked on and that should have been from 0 to 2 but our output here is 0 to 4 because we had squared that output um, and so this is just a really simple um, example of how to run a calculation um, through this program now, just to show you, I mean, this was a, a very simple example, but there are uh, other examples that we can do. So before we complete this video, I just want to briefly go through um, a few examples. So if you wanted to program this calculation into Simulink, so this is something that um, hopefully you know how to do in MATLAB. Um, you would create some time vector and then program this function, and then you would be done. Um, in Simulink, this would be a little bit different, though. Um, there's actually more than one way to do this, um, but I just wanted to show you one way using those different math operations and how to route signals and piece everything all together in a bit more complex of a way. So we'll want to use this calculation, um, look at it on a scope. Um, another thing that we'll see, um, I didn't show you this yet, but you can actually change your simulation parameters to change how long the simulation runs. And then there's just some tips here about how we're going to use this. So we use that clock block to get the time. We use the math function block for the exponential and square functions. Um, the sine function we can get from a trigonometric function block. And then we're also going to use gain product and add blocks. And so what this looks like then, just to keep this statement up here, I'll pull up uh, just a picture of the Simulink um, program that I had created. Um, and then we'll we'll actually open that up and run it and see how it works. But so what's interesting here is we have this clock block, so this gives us our time, but then we kind of have to piece together our calculations almost a little bit backwards. We need to um, think about order of operations. So this top path here, I take that time and then I need to multiply it by five. So I use a gain block with a gain of five and then send it to the sine function because I had t here, then I had 5t, and then I send 5t into the sine. So I have sine of 5t. And then I'm going to multiply that by this path. So this path then is the, I have t, multiply by minus 2, so I have minus 2t, and then do our exponential, so e to the minus 2t. And then this product block will multiply those two together. So now I've created this term. Then we needed to add that, so we have our add block adding this signal path to this signal path. And so for this signal path, what we did is I started with t, and here I did the math function to square it. So I got t, now I have t squared, and then I'm multiplying by my gain, because I wanted 0.1 times t squared, not 0.1t the quantity squared. So the gain block's actually going to come after. And so then after these are added together, we're just going to use a scope to take a look. So let me pull this program up, and we will actually run it. So here we we'll see this is the same thing um, and if we just give this a run we see uh, that it did run and then we just need to look at the scope. So this will kind of show you what I was talking about in that um, this isn't the best scaling for this. So if we click this auto scale button now we get a much better picture as to what's going on. And so this is the result of that calculation. 
Um, now the one thing we haven't talked about yet is how to change this so that it's only running from 0 to 2 seconds. This is done, um, a simple way is just to change it right here. This block will be the end simulation time. But if you wanted to look at more details under the simulation tab, model configuration parameters, once this opens up, let's see, we're blocked, there we go. Uh, you can change the start time, stop time, you can change different options of the solver. Uh, basically, what Simulink is doing is it's, it's performing some kind of um, differential equation solver, in a sense. And so the default is this ODE45, which you may remember from MATLAB. And so this is the default. This usually works pretty well. Uh, if you really get into Simulink, you can talk about changing these options. But for basic use, you don't really need to mess with this. Um, but this option does tend to be useful, changing how long you run your simulation for. Um, so this is how you can get in here and change those options. So that's one example of how to perform a calculation. Um, another example, one thing that you might have noticed with Simulink is that it very much looks like control system block diagrams. Um, that's something that you may have learned um, in other courses. And so Simulink really matches up nicely with block diagrams because you are essentially creating a block diagram system. And so this is a real natural way to program and simulate transfer functions. So if we're given a transfer function, so this is an example. Um, we can think of this as a spring mass damper system. It doesn't have to be, um, but that helps me as a mechanical engineer think about how this is working. And then we're going to use a step input with a step size 2 and look with a scope to see what happens when we send that into this transfer function. So we're basically looking at the step response of this function, um, but instead of unit step, a step function with size 2. And so uh, what this looks like is this a real simple program. We have the step function. We define a transfer function. There's a block for that. And then a scope. And so let's actually just look at this program. Pull this over here. Um, so pretty much if you drop in the transfer function block, it's going to have some default values. We'll need to edit that. So once you drop it in there, you double click. All you need to do is adjust these coefficients. So MATLAB describes polynomials by a set of um, a vector of coefficients. And so with the numerator just being 1, we have a 1 here. But then the denominator, this is the 20 for s squared, 15 s, 100 as just the constant term. And so this just counts down in the order of the polynomial. Um, and so this is even listed right up here in the discussion for this block. So once you set these to the desired function, um, you're good to go. Uh, note also that in the step block, we did have to change this final value. But otherwise, this is a pretty simple um, program. So if we run this, uh, we uh, have completed the simulation. We just need to open up our scope. So at first glance, this looks not interesting at all. But once we put the auto scale on, now we're seeing a real nice second order step response. And so this is uh, the spring mass damper response for, for that system. Um, so that is it for uh, a basic introduction to Simulink. There is a lot that you can do with this simulation tool, but these are kind of the basics uh, to get you started. Thank you.